look around any club racing or even professional racing organization anywhere in the world, and the little classes, the junior classes, you're pretty much gonna find this bike, the Kawasaki Ninja 400, damn near exclusively filling up every grid position because they're just so good in race trim, but still, even in stock trim, they're still so good and they dominate everything. It used to be the KTM RC390 would give it a run for its money, but things kind of changed and the Ninja took off and the KTM got left behind. However, for 2022, KTM has released a new updated RC390 and this is it right here. Main improvements and changes, uh, different frame, you have IMU, uh, TC and ABS, same general engine, different airbox, a little bit different mapping, uh, different bodywork, restyled fuel tank, restyled front end section for different looks and the fuel tank gives you a bit more room to move around, uh, different brakes and overall lighter frame and lighter wheels. Is it, however, going to topple the Kawasaki for track supremacy? Well, that's why we are here at Button Willow Raceway to find out. And by we, I mean myself, of course, and my merry band of friends. Over here is my friend Aaron. We have Kate. We have Mark. All of these guys and gals bring a wealth of experience from all different kinds of riding. Uh, Aaron here currently has a Ninja 400, used to have an RC390, his perspective is going to be pretty helpful for us to decipher how these bikes work. Kate has ridden a bunch of things, including little bikes. She currently has an R6 that she rips around on, super qualified to be helping us with this test. And then Mark Miller, he's ridden a couple things in his life. Um, I don't, you've like won a couple things and Isle of Man, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he knows what the hell he's doing and then you've got me, I'm just paid to be here. So. With that said, let's get down and dirty with the Kawasaki Ninja 400 and the KTM RC390. We've ripped around the racetrack here. Since, Kate, you're sitting on the Kawasaki, let's start with you. And of course, it's always the polite thing to do. Ladies first. <laughs> uh, like I said, you've ridden a bunch of bikes. You have an R6 now. You had a Ninja 300 the Ninja before? Ninja 300, yeah. That's what yeah. I started my uh, track career with. So Super it cool. was a, a familiar feel for sure. And I've definitely forgotten how much fun these bikes are. I absolutely love how easy it is to ride and I absolutely love how forgiving these bikes are. You truly can ride it without 100% focus because they will get you through your mistakes. Um, <laughs> most of the mistakes anyway. So yeah, it was really fun to ride and, and um, I definitely think that there's some things that can be improved. <laughs> um, but Let's overall, start with the positives, the good stuff on the Kawasaki. Um, super smooth throttle, so uh, you coming out of corners, uh, even if you feel like you're grabbing a little too much throttle, there's, it doesn't give you that feedback at all. It just kind of goes. Um, you can pretty much, so I work with new riders a lot, uh, and they're always concerned about, like, what gear should I be in? You know, they're always asking you, when this corner, that corner, what gear should I be in? On this bike, honestly, if you're like learning how to ride, you can put it in fourth gear and it will get you through most of the track without feeling like you're in the wrong gear all the time and I'm talking about at like C group B group pace you know it takes that component out of like needing to shift all the time uh, so I, I really like that about it um, very responsive to your inputs so I use like foot peg pressures and bar pressures and it's extremely responsive probably due to how light it is uh, to those um, inputs and flicks over extremely easy so I like that about it all right the negatives the bad stuff <laughs> So I don't know why, but I did feel it was extremely like squiggly or squirrely. Um, so even just like under what I didn't feel like was heavy braking, uh, the bike was still kind of like um, moving around a bit too much under me. Um, so and the suspension felt extremely soft. Both the rear and the front uh, felt too soft for me. So the good part about a suspension like that, in my opinion, is at tracks like Button Willow that have uh, parts that are kind of uh, uneven or bumpy, this bike does not feel it at all. Um, like going through certain turns where on my R6, I'm like getting bucked off my seat. Here, it's just cruising through it. But the bad part is that, you know, it's squishy under hard braking. And yeah, it does get like a little uh, uh, 
wiggly or swirmy <laughs> when you're when you're going uh, coming out of uh, corners. You know, if you feel it doesn't feel that stable. So that was my least favorite thing about it. So if you were to own this bike, what's the first thing you would do? Change the suspensions, and I, I would definitely change the master cylinder because for a little bit of a stiffer feel on that front brake because it uh, you don't get a whole lot of feel on. All right, Aaron. You own a Ninja 400 that has been converted to race trim. Do you agree with Kate's impressions? For the most part, I do. I'm okay with the master cylinder. I think this one has gone off a little bit today because it's been through a lot of uh, riding and some abuse. On mine, the first thing I did was I replaced the uh, stock rotor with a, with a heavier duty one. I replaced the brake pads, put stainless steel lines on, and now I feel completely confident in the braking. Suspension is very squishy as it is. It was exciting at times. But I'm keeping my suspension completely stock until I can't do anything more with it. And I feel like I've still got a ways to go. On a bumpy track like this or Sonoma Raceway, that squishy suspension feels pretty nice. So as an overall package, this stock bike, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Um, I certainly appreciate the extra tiny little bit of horsepower, you know, when you're dealing with bikes like these, every little bit helps. I think it's a great package, uh, a tremendous learning platform. I wish I would have started doing track days on something like this. Interesting segue to Mark, the probably the most experienced of us in this group. Uh, your thoughts? Well, I'm also the oldest, I think. So. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I wasn't going to mention that. However, uh, your impressions on the Kawasaki. So yeah, my first impression was exactly what she said, which was it started getting a little bit of this little noodly thing going on. But once I rode it a little longer and a little bit harder, it also got off and got on the KTM and also a couple other bikes here at the circuit today, which are really stiff and also three times the engine. Coming back to the little Kawasaki, it revealed itself for actually working quite well in its stock trim. And let's keep in mind that this is built for the street at the moment. We haven't done the steel braided lines. We haven't done any cartridges in the front forks. This softer stuff being uh, pushed very hard by Troy and I, it actually held, it, it composed itself quite, quite well. Uh, it tracked its line real well. I thought the brakes were fine for what they are. Uh, but certainly this is not supposed to be a turnkey race bike. You know, it's not like a spec class, give your 13 year old some money and they're gonna go racing with this. This is just a street bike. And I think it worked very well on the racetrack being in, at also at this price point. You know, you don't have an Olin, so you don't have all this kit stuff and the big Brimbos. At, from the dealer. It's not the OEM kit. It's not the street comp stuff. So I'm actually a big fan. I like the power, uh, the range of power. It just kept pulling from all the way down, all the way up. It had a nice over rev. I like that it didn't have a quick shifter or any kind of gadgets on it. It just allowed you to just ride the crap out of it and just keep banging gears and just, you know, kind of do all the stuff. And I, I actually, I'm a big fan. Um, also keep in mind that we put some of the grippiest tires in the Bridgestone R11s in the world on this bike, which is also going to wind it up into knots a little bit more with that extra mad edge grip, doing a, quite a bumpy track. There's some high speed sweepers. It really held its own. And I think uh, above all, besides uh, this really cool engine, I've got a personal R3 at home that I ride a lot on the street. This engine is far superior in, in many ways. But the basic geometry of this bike is a great plant, uh, foundation to build on with a little bit better dampening and better brakes. The thing tracks amazing, uh, great on the brakes, good bottom end, and also had a nice mid-range, just ready for the next gear, ready for the next gear with the parallel, the parallel twin. But uh, it's just a street bike, so let's keep in mind, and like, how did it do today? Freaking really good for, for something that has no suspension and no brakes yet with really sticky, gri grippy tires. So another thing just to touch base on is, do you think you have to have big, massive horsepower to have fun at a racetrack? With a little bit of experience, with a decent rider on this package right here, we were actually passing like $35,000 Ducatis in, on this 400. So just, to, you know, you can make up a lot having some experience. And my, my only point is you don't have to go spend 45 grand to get a rush of speed and actually do really good lap times. You know, there's nothing, nothing that this is holding you back. It's just a matter of you learning. How to, how to get the best out of it. So then we switch our attention to the KTM. Really heavily revised for 2022. Same basic engine, made about 40 horsepower on the Rottweiler Performance Dyno. If you see the Dyno chart, you'll see a pretty gnarly horsepower line with the fueling. 
we'll get to that in a second. However, different airbox, same basic engine, revised frame with removable braces that you can adjust the rigidity of the chassis with, which is pretty gnarly for a 390 single cylinder race bike, air quotes. Adjustable suspension, different bodywork, quick shifter and quick shift downshift as well, ABS, TC. A lot of stuff that looks great on paper. Now, how does it fare here at the racetrack? We'll start again with Kate. KTM impressions? It was definitely slower than the Ninja 400, um, but I would actually be okay with sacrificing a little bit of that horsepower um, for how much more stable that bike felt. Um, and again, we're not talking about, you know, like being competition because then obviously I would be at a disadvantage, but just as a track day goer who like wants to be uh, better and progress, uh, I do think that this is the better bike for learning. Um, it just it felt extremely stable um, on the uh, front straight. Yes, you're falling behind, but you can catch up to riders so well in corners because you have so much confidence um, in what the bike is doing. Uh, not only did it feel more stable, but I did feel like it was giving a lot more feedback. Like I could feel when I'm not, you know, the front is acting up a little bit. I can feel when uh, maybe I was a little too sloppy on the throttle coming out of corners. It was giving me a lot more feedback than the Ninja 400. So um, as is in this trim, like I said, I would sacrifice a little bit of that uh, speed for, um, for the stability. Now you are going to be shifting a lot <laughs> uh, on this motorcycle. Uh, it's not as, uh, you know, uh, click and go as the Ninja 400 where you can sort of like stick it out in uh, one or two gears for most of the track. You're definitely going to be shifting a lot more with this one. Um, but again, it's not as big of a deal for me. It is, uh, it did feel a lot better. Um, it was still just as when you're going over those bumps, I didn't feel like it was unstable. Uh, it still felt like it was cushioning them really well. Um, but it's just the feedback was a, a lot better. Since you mentioned shifting, thoughts on the quick shifter? Absolutely love it. I'm spoiled. <laughs> so, um, my R6 is the first bike that I've had that has a quick shifter uh, and an auto blipper. So I'm <clears throat> now being used to it. Uh, having to use the clutch on the Ninja 400 was definitely uh, a disadvantage for me. So uh, yeah, I absolutely uh, love the quick shifter um, and the auto blipper and the fact that it comes stock on this motorcycle, I think is a huge bonus and the one thing that uh, you know I would change on it if I uh, got it for myself as a track bike is um, I would maybe put like a short throttle kit mm. on it mm -hmm. uh, because I did feel like I was having to like do this mm -hmm. <laughs> when I'm going full throttle uh, but I think once you put that uh, and you know maybe like uh, change the sprocket size to like get a little more uh, low end power but other than that it was great I think that for me the power was really like the only negative you know it definitely uh, not just riding with uh, Aaron and going side by side on the straight where he was pulling away from me on the 400 but just being surrounded by other bikes in this class uh, it was very evident that it was mm. lacking power uh, just a bit um, but other than that I, I was honestly really uh, happy with the bike and this is just being like very nitpicky but I think that the Ninja looks more refined, like all the parts on it, like everything looks more refined, where this definitely looks like a less expensive motorcycle forever. <laughs> They're actually the same price. I know, but, but. I, you know what I mean? Like the just the plastics yeah. on it, this looks so much more refined. Um, but yeah, other than that, I was very happy with the bike. Final thought, just pure looks wise, which one do you like better? I actually dig the KTM. Yeah? Um, I think it looks different. Like this is a very like, you know, sport bike 101 look. Like if you open the dictionary <laughs> and looked up sport bike, most of them I look like it. this. Um, but I think that KTM, like they, even with the previous model, it looked so different. Mm. Um, and this one reminds me of like the old RC8 models, mm. you know, it's mm. like a miniature version of that. Mm. Um, and I like it, I think it looks different and I think it looks cool. Sweet. The sitting position um, on it, on that bike, I like uh, more as well, because I feel like you're, it's a little more sporty. You feel yep. like you're sitting mm -hmm. on top of the bike, where the Ninja feels a little more like a sport tour, where you're a little bit like sitting in it. Um, so I prefer the riding position of that bike as I mean, well. You can see the clip-ons on the Kawasaki are above the triple and they're yeah. below on the KTM. So, yeah. so it has more of a, like a sport, sporty totally. feel. Totally. Excellent. Aaron. Your thoughts on the KTM being a former RC390 owner? Already, even with it the way we got it, it felt 
really good on the track. I didn't feel like it was wallowing at all. Um, I love the fact that it comes with stainless steel brake lines. Um, the braking did not feel, I didn't. Brake line. Brake line, <laughs> yes, <one>. thank you. <laughs> didn't feel like it was missing anything there. Um, yeah, it felt really good out of the box. I love that they upgraded the electronics. The TFT screen is a huge improvement over the old one. Um, I applaud the fact that they put a quick shifter and blipper on here. It's a little, it could use some tuning. Um, hopefully that's a, something they can update with a firmware update, but the upshifts, I think you had mentioned it too, it was less than smooth. You're being awfully diplomatic right now. I'm trying now. to be. Um, <laughs> the downshifts though, on the other hand, with the blipper, I thought those were great. I didn't have any problem with that. But the upshifts, especially like four or five, six, that was a little um, less than optimal. I guess I'll ask you the same question I asked Kate. Looks wise, what hmm. do you think? I think I like the KTM, uh, especially they've got another color that's got that new blue that they're using on mm. their bikes that you can get this in, and that looks pretty good to me. Um, and I like the fact that it looks different. There's so many Ninja 400s out there that having something that stands out a little bit is kind of cool. Let's ask Mark his thoughts on the KTM. Okay, uh, where do I start? <laughs> um, I agree. Let's start with this quick shifter because that's what uh, Aaron just mentioned. I thought, again, uh, I um, echo what you said on the upshifts, pretty lousy. Uh, downshifts worked great. So on the street, I'd probably want to remove it, to be fair, because just going through traffic and upshifting and trying to, you know, you have to kind of feather the clutch sometimes, and I think it would get confused. Um, it took a while for me to understand how to ride the thing because there's just no over rev. The, it, you have to shift it almost instantly as you come out of the corners. And once you understand how to ride it, it becomes more fun and more productive. Like you can get better drives. You know, I was actually following Troy earlier where he had the faster bike. And I was, you know, if you get on the gas early and keep nailing those, you can almost match the, the acceleration off the 400. So I was expecting a little bit more uh, rigidity as far as like out, outright aggressive ergos and stuff for some reason i just thought it would be more like a moto 3 bike and it's just not just fyi it's a little bit more of a street bike than it is an absolute I mean, like a prototype race bike it's just not the brakes for me the master was a little bit actually strange i felt like the lever wasn't really giving me the same feedback even as the squishy one i felt like it was I, I had it adjusted all the way towards my hand, towards the bar, and it still wasn't close enough. It just seemed far, far away, even on the last setting. Little nitpicks, you could probably figure out how to get, get through that. It looks pretty badass. I mean, for this price point, it's great. It's just cool. I like the matte orange. The one downside of having a, a, a badass orange motorcycle, if you want to ride it on the local canyons next to my house, is <laughs> that orange little 300 went whizzing by. Let's go find it. You know, let, I'm talking about the police helicopter. We go look for the little orange bike. This, you could say, yeah, but, but your honor, there's 4,000 of these just in Calabasas alone. <laughs> With that, you might have a little bit harder, you know, sell as, it wasn't me. Uh-huh. So <laughs> there's some benefit of the doubt there. Uh, or not. Yeah, that's bad. I like it. I like the seat, the fabric on the seat. The styling is cool. It comes with some adjustability on the suspension, and I think uh, it might be a lot of fun. If you can get a pipe for that stinking thing, I think it would open it way up. You get on this, it's a bit neutered down, and I think if you just got that thing to breathe a little bit, legally or illegally, get a little power command <laughs> or a flash, never. flash the ECU, that thing is going to come alive. It's a 400, that's a perfect size for really having a lot of fun without going 190 mile an hour. You guys pretty much took the words out of my mouth. However, I am... Um paid to speak about these things anyway, so I will. KTM, like you've all just mentioned, in contrast to the Kawasaki's noodly frame, or wet noodle feel that Mark described it as, in, relate, in comparison, the KTM feels pretty darn rigid uh, compared to the Kawasaki, which I like in a track environment like this. It feels like it's living up to KTM's mantra of ready to race. Really ch rigid chassis, all things considered in this category. These wide bars, I could toss this thing wherever I wanted to. It just has no power. That's kind of the gist of it. It has no power and the feeling of it's kind of lame where you want it the most, which is a little funny that it was allowed out the door in that state to begin with. Um, the quick shifter, like Mark mentioned, I appreciate it's there. I'm more often than not a fan of quick shifters 
This one is really clunky and agricultural. I really had to get my foot under there and go clunk, clunk, clunk each time. You're almost better doing it the old fashioned way with just flipping off the throttle for a hot sec and lifting up your foot. But I agree with Mark, put a pipe on it or somehow allow it to breathe the way God intended and get some power back into it. It could give the Kawasaki a run for its money. I'm torn. The chassis on the KTM is really darn good for a little bike like this, but the power on the Kawasaki just makes it so easy to ride, especially in relation to the KTM. It's like, oh, I don't really have to try at all because I can just do this and catch up to you, KTM guy. And that's what Mark and I were doing. Whenever he was on the KTM and I was on the Kawasaki, all I had to do was just a little bit more of my right hand and I could stick with Mark the entire time. And when I was riding the KTM and he was on the Kawasaki, he was always looking in his mirrors, trying to find where I was, because he was gone, and I'm just trying my damnedest to stick up with, stick with him. So, yeah, it's 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 a conundrum. Boils down to, you know, do you value power over chassis? Do you value an orange over green? Do you like the way this looks over the Kawasaki? I like the way it looks too. I agree with you guys. It's a pretty good looking bike. It looks like it's not a beginner bike, which I think people in this class are kind of wanting these days. So we come to this conclusion here with my final question to all of you, starting with Aaron. Which one do you pick and why? As much as I liked a lot of things about the KTM, I think I'd go with the, with the Ninja because of the aftermarket support for it. Anything you want for this, you can get. Fair enough. Kate? Same uh, question. <laughs> well, again, if we're purely speaking of, like, I'm a track day goer and I'm yes. trying to get better, so not a, like a race scenario, uh, I would pick the KTM because I think it is a better bike for uh, out of the box for learning. Um, and most people, like, just starting their track career are not really going to notice the power difference at first. Um, and I think it's more important to have a bike that is extremely stable and extremely forgiving than a bike that has more um, horsepower when you're starting out. And Mark? I like them both. I thought we had a great time today. It was a lot of fun and it's nice that you don't you know, have this overwhelming fear of like scratching like the most expensive motorcycle in the world. I would have to pick the Kawasaki if I had to, uh, gun to head. Um, I just like the power delivery a little bit better. I thought it, uh, the Ergos for me was a little bit more fun. I d you can upgrade the brakes and upgrade the, um, uh, a couple other things that it needs. And yeah, that, I would be perfectly happy with it. Although the styling is just not my favorite. I, this Darth Vader thing is to me, I don't know why they're doing it, but uh, that is my answer. Excellent. And I guess it's now time for my answer. Ah, oh, well. I would pick the Kawasaki for very similar reasons as Mark and Aaron. Take that with the context of Mark and I especially have been doing this longer. You know, I'm, I think the two of us, we can agree, have progressed beyond the power levels of the KTM and the Kawasaki, let's be real here. But the potential for growth from the aftermarket, the Kawasaki, like you mentioned, Aaron, is huge for this thing. To get the KTM to a point that it would match the Kawasaki would take a lot of work from the aftermarket. And do I wanna spend that much time and money to get that thing to match that thing? No. So I say that from a point of being a little bit further on in my riding career, the Kawasaki suits my tastes more. I don't care about the looks as much especially when I'm on the racetrack. I can't see the f nose of it anyway. I wanna know, I wanna feel it go fast. And I feel I can ex extract more performance from the Kawasaki than I can from the KTM. However, if you were to give me a KTM, I'd find ways to make it really freaking cool. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's exactly why I brought these people along with us. Aaron, Kate, Mark, your perspectives on this have been invaluable, I mean, you can hear me blabber on, but your perspectives really bring a whole new light to this comparison. So uh, that's it from Button Willow Raceway. I want to thank Mark, Kate, Aaron. I also want to thank KTM 
and Kawasaki for loaning us the bikes, and I especially want to thank Bridgestone for providing the really good R11 tires for us to just ride the crap on. And last but not least, I want to thank Dustin Coiner and his gang at Track Days with a Z for having just a really good, well put together track day here at Button Willow. Uh, this gang's been doing track days with an S for 20 odd years now, so they've got their things together, let's say. So yeah, thank you Track Days for having us out. A really good day at Button Willow. Thanks to this crew for riding with me and having a good time and keeping the bike on, bikes on two wheels. And that's it from Button Willow. You can make your own decisions about which bike suits you based on your wants and your needs and your experience. And if you're tired of listening to me talk about these bikes, you can read my words too by going to Motorcycle.com, reading the story there. Give us a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe and all that. And uh, yeah, fun day. Thanks gang for playing along. And as always, we'll see you later.